Rock My World project. In thinking about the Walk My World project, uh, this originally began as an open learning and research project. Uh, it was a group of uh, colleagues that were exploring the use of digital text and tools and trying to identify ways for uh, connection and collaboration and sharing among educators and students um, online. Within the project, there have always been uh, two areas of focus, the first of which is it was an open social experiment. Uh, we were looking in online spaces trying to figure out ways to get educators to play with digital text and tools, first as a response to uh, poetry and then uh, after that in the second year as a way to build, construct, and curate uh, your digital identity. So we were looking at ways to enable educators and their students to play in these digital spaces and create a digital identity. Um, in conducting this work in the open, a secondary focus became the fact that now as we were researching and, and learning collaboratively in the open, now we happened upon an accidental uh, MOOC or massive open online community in our framing. Um, so initially this was just an open research project and then it became something more. The first year of the project occurred in uh, 2014. What, like I said earlier, we focused on the Poet Laureate, Robert Haas. Um, for the most part, it was, as I explained earlier, that the different participants in different classrooms and learners globally. Uh, so we had K-12 students globally. We also had some higher ed students. and We had teachers and instructors all sharing and connecting online. Um, but for the most part, what we would do is we would give people a prompt. They would respond to the prompt, they would create some content, then they would reach back out and share content on Twitter using the hashtag, and then learners would interact and connect, and we would tweet and retweet and favorite different uh, pieces that people shared. Uh, so to see more about it, you can go to the uh, URL redirect uh, bit.ly slash walkmyworld2014. The first year we ran the Walk My World project was in 2014. Uh, basically, as we said earlier, a lot of the learning events, we had 10 learning events. Uh, each learning event lasts a week. Each learning event has a basic or a simple uh, starting point. So there's a common shared experience, something that anyone can do, anyone can get started on, regardless of expertise or digital savvy. We wanted it to be approachable for everyone, but then extend it so that anybody that really wanted to dive in and do more or remix or had expertise in a certain way, by all means, they could jump out and, and try new things. In the first year in 2014, a lot of the work focused on Robert Haas, the US, uh, one of the U.S. Poet Laureates, this was uh, an artifact of work that we did previously in, in different versions of these uh, research experiments where we play with digital tools and connect it to language and literacy. Um, so the, the, the learning events, the 10 learning events are all available on the webpage. You can click through and see what we shared. Um, but basically, we wanted people to get out there. We wanted them to, in weeks one, two, and three, get started playing with Twitter, play with digital text and tools, play with tools like Instagram and Vine, create content and share it out online. In week four, we remind participants that we are focusing on Robert Haas and poetry and thinking about ways that we can use digital tools to unpack uh, poetry and literature and figure out what these things for uh, mean for us, but then also use that as a vehicle, the poetry and the digital content and the project uh, use that as a vehicle to start to unpack our own identities and the ways that we name things and our own private histories and the narratives that we create and we share out with others. Uh, weeks five and six, we have participants continue to read Haas's poetry. At this point, 
we had them not only uh, reading the poetry, but we started adding the poetry to spaces like Poetry Genius so that people could annotate and comment on the poems. And we wanted them to think about human condition and how we interact with each other um, in these online and face-to-face -face spaces. Week seven, we extend it a little bit more and we think about uh, feelings and, and specifically the feeling of happiness and how we connect um, and, and what do we see in the human condition as we share and create and connect with others. Um, week eight, we asked participants to create their own poetry. Um, so they started to create short poems or haikus and, and create this and remix it with digital content and share that out on the Walk My World hashtag so that others can see what you've done and how we play with text and the, and the digital content. Week nine, we wanted people to uh, curate all of the work that they shared from weeks one through eight, basically pull it all together, add it into a, a tool like Storify or Digo uh, Outliner, pull the content together, feel free to annotate it and mark up and say uh, what you were thinking from learning event to learning event, share that out um, so that people can see how your naming and identification of the world separates or makes the, the world that you live in. And then week 10, share that content out with someone else in the project and get some feedback on what they see about your world or what they see as you allow them to take a walk in your world in 2014. The second year of the project in 2015, we expanded a little bit from the initial year. Uh, we did not focus on one poet laureate or one uh, piece of text across the entire experience. Instead, we looked at expansion of digital identity and helping educators and their students think about their own digital identity and create and construct online content to stretch across the 10 learning events. So we, instead of focusing on one laureate and, and the poetry, we focused on summarizing and synthesizing across multiple texts, trying to make sense of this, um, and then what that does to uh, your digital identity as you create and share and collaborate online. To see all 10 learning events for 2015, you can visit the URL at the bottom of the page, uh, bit.ly slash walkmyworld2015. In the second year we ran the Walk My World project in 2015, we started to think about identity and not really focus on a, a poet uh, or a poet laureate. Um, we wanted people to think about digital identity and what we do and how we construct it. Uh, so the first week we had an onboarding week where we just got started. Uh, we talked about Twitter and how we use Twitter and some of the different tools that we might use. We also wanted to start to think about having individuals start to blog and start to create content and think about where they're going to share it and where they're going to house this content. Um, we were believers in, you know, in open learning and, and creative commons licensing, but also uh, publishing on your own space and syndicating and sharing it out elsewhere. Um, we started off with the first real learning event by opening new doors. We wanted participants to take a picture of their front door and share it out so we can see you know, the different spaces that we live in and, and how we connect and where we enter and exit through different portals in our life. Uh, the virtual high five, we wanted to start folding in the uh, community immediately and getting people connecting and collaborating. So we wanted participants to reach out to someone else online and give a virtual high five to someone else. Uh, in uh, the learning event three, we wanted people to reflect on their own identity. Uh, learning event four, we brought in some different multimodal content and wanted people to think about dawn and the start of their day and how we, you know, the routines and rituals we use as we start our days and how they might be similar and different across the globe. Um, learning event five was a lot of fun. We were, were talking about totems and about different things that um, almost religiously or spiritually make us who we are. 
Um, so we're really pushing participants to think about their identity and things they believe to be, um, you know, taken uh, sacred, uh, taken to be sacred, uh, writ broadly. Um, the learning event six, we thought about uh, dreaming and how sometimes when we dream, there's these in-between places where we can go and, and what are things that we dream about or also the, the, the con converse of that, what are things we might have nightmares about. Uh, the mirror was another uh, fun learning event for learning event seven where we thought about uh, some of the magic involved in mirrors. Uh, learning event eight, we, th we talked about the hero's journey and the journey that we're all on. Uh, learning event nine, we had participants start to think about themselves as uh, journalists and start to document this journey that we've been on. Um, and then learning event 10 is a way to wrap everything up, think about the story that we've told, and then how do we conclude all of the work in 2015. In terms of next steps, uh, at the end of this year, uh, usually around December, January, we start to plan for and you know get the, the next year up and rolling. Once we start these different meetings, these meetings we've conducted in the past online openly using a Hangout on Air, anybody is welcome to come on in and join us as we plan. All of the work that for the, the last iteration of this were available on Google Docs in a Google Hangout on Air, so you can go in and see what we did. But as we get ready for the upcoming year, by all means, join us. Come on in, get involved, uh, sit in on the Hangouts or watch them after the fact. Uh, you can see the Google Docs and the planning pieces. Uh, we'd love to have the opportunity to bring in more people to help us push our thinking and shape the ultimate project. Um, so come on in and join us uh, as we connect and collaborate and share as the project gets started. And to find out more, uh, you can go to the, the main project website right now, at least uh, unless we relaunch it, at bit.ly slash walkmyworld, or just go ahead online to the hashtag walk, walkmyworld and you can see what we're doing and we'll start to uh, announce and, and send out posts as the new version is getting started. So the main website right now is this website that we built up in Google Sites. So if you take a look, we have uh, the, the last round of learning events. Uh, we have where exactly in the world are the different uh, participants, uh, the so what question, which is terribly important when we do anything in our classroom, the list of organizers, and most of all, uh, the, the research that we've conducted. Um, Different elements that I want to make sure that we pay attention to as we look at the website, uh, one of which is uh, my colleague Ryan Risch and Greg McVary. Uh, they did a great job pulling together different maps so we can see globally where some of the participants are and where people are connecting from. I'd also want to highlight, uh, the um, at least on the first page, the fact that this is an open research project. We want to foreground our use of your data in our research um, and let you understand where we're coming from. So I think it's really important that we talk about exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. To give you an example of, of what we're doing, we basically give you the privacy and research guidelines built into the site so that you know exactly what we're doing, what does privacy mean, what does uh, public mean, what do we mean by open. We want to be open and forthright with what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and we've had other colleagues, other researchers reach back out and find value in this and start to take these guidelines and modify them for their own purposes. So I think it's, it's important that as, as researchers, and I think as educators, we're all researchers, um, we provide opportunities to explore this and explain what we're doing and why we're doing it. On the research page, we talk about 
a lot of the research that we've already conducted. Um, we had a piece published on the first year in the MIT Civic Media Reader. We'll share those links out in the broader uh, materials. Uh, we also have different theoretical perspectives. We have case studies. These are individual learning events um, and work by people in the first year of the project. Um, and then we had some of the, the follow-up and the wrap-up from the first year. Uh, it was basically us trying to make sense of what happened um, and some of the, the larger themes that people shared out. The case studies piece is interesting because you can see a lot of the work that people shared that first year. Um, this is a lot of the work that went into the initial, uh, the MIT Civic Media Reader pieces, and it's also work that went into uh, some of the other publications and presentations that we had. Uh, and then to wrap things up, at least looking at the overview for the site, once again, this is great work that, that Greg and McVary and Ryan Risch put together on pulling in these maps and making better use of exactly where are we as we reach out and share. Uh, so you can see already there's a lot of different groups from across the globe that are getting involved, individuals that are getting involved in sharing. That's a pretty powerful visual to see what people are doing. And this is people that are hanging out online, creating, sharing, opening themselves up, and trying to figure out what these different social media uh, and digital tools can possibly mean for teaching and learning. So if you want to get involved, we'd love to have you. Uh, this is an open experiment. This is an open community of learners. Um, we're busy develop a, a, a personal or professional learning network of people that are interested in teasing out these ideas. We are openly experimenting online. So by all means, first of all, just get involved. The learning events are out there. We'd love to see what you create. Um, feel free to use all the materials, modify it, share it, remix the content that's out there. Everything is Creative Commons licensed. Um, so please go ahead, share it, recreate it, remix it. Um, it's by no means is, is the content that we put out perfect. We'd love to see people uh, fork what we've done and create something new and better um, because that way we all learn. Uh, if you want to get in, you know, invested in the work that we're doing, create and share and send your materials out on Twitter using the Walk My World hashtag. Um, it's also suggested a couple of the groups uh, at different organizations and institutions and schools, they would have their own group hashtag. Um, so you would include and in, you, you know, have your students include the Walk My World hashtag, but then also have a secondary hashtag that they include in content they share out. So if you're using a tool like Hootsuite or TweetDeck or whatever Twitter aggregator you use, your students could lump those tweets together to see what people are doing and sharing. Um, and then by all means, blog about what you're doing. On my blog, I would routinely share the different prompts, share my work, and then I would reflect on the week. Uh, we're very interested to see your thoughts and your feelings about the experience. Uh, so blog about what you're learning, blog about what works, what doesn't work, um, but share out what your thoughts are, and then we can fold this into our ideas about how we collaborate, create, and share uh, content online. 